Well, good evening and welcome to something a little bit different. Cricket's newest competition, the 100, its newest format, is finally ready to get underway and delighted to be joined by someone who knows a thing or two about white ball cricket, former England international and T20 World Cup winner, Ryan Sidebottom. And Ryan, as cricket fans at the moment, feels like we're getting spoiled a little bit, doesn't it? Well, I mean, I am, I am very, very excited by this new brand and new concept. Um, no, the hundreds, something totally new and out there. Um, I remember playing when you know, T20 was going to be announced and there was a lot of um, scepticism and players were like, how's it going to go? What, what's going to happen? We, we don't really know. Um, it's it's all, all the unknown. And then you see now globally, T20 is a global brand, huge all over the world and growing and growing in, in many, many countries is that you wouldn't specifically say play cricket. So now um, the 100, um, it's coming around thick and fast, starting on Wednesday. Um, everyone's excited. Social media has been going um, off the charts. And, you know, it's been great because there's been so many people talking about this brand and this new concept. And it's not all been positive, but I think it, it, the proof is in the pudding. People are talking about it. And you've got some amazing players um, girls and boys, um, you know, the women's game is growing globally. It's absolutely phenomenal. You know, opportunity the for, for the first time, a lot of these players in the women's game that have never been on TV, um, you know, they must be so, so excited. And you've seen now, you know, you've got England representatives, you've got world-class cricketers, you've got overseas players, you've got young, talented players that have been performing brilliantly in the blast off of their counties as it were so for me um a lot can't go wrong i am very very excited by this new concept well, let's just have a, a quick a quick overview of the new concept it's 100 balls for each side and a slightly different change to the uh, kind of bowling structure because teams can choose to to bowl in either five or ten ball overs with each bowler getting up to 20 balls each would you have liked that as a bowler ryan no <laughs> <laughs> I, I think tactically, I mean, you've got some of the best coaches in the world, um, you know, some assistant coaches from England. So for me, I think the first five or six games, tactically, how is it going to pan out? Is it going to be like a game of chess? I know there's going to be so much excitement surrounding the start of it. Plus, you know, you've got these amazing world-class players who can hit fours and sixes, and it is about entertainment. But who's going to play the best? No one can quite say just yet. Ten ball overs, where are they going to use it? You know, who's going to bowl it? And, and for me, it'll probably be the middle over period. You'll have your, your mystery spinners, your leg spinners, like your Adil Rashid, Rashid Khans, who are genuine wicket takers. But anyway, also on the other side of that, you could go for 60 or 50 off those ten balls quite comfortably. Um, you know, especially maybe at, Swat, at the Sway Lake where the boundaries are straight, they're so short. So, look, it's exciting and it's unfamiliar territory for a lot of, of players and coaches. But for me, 10 ball overs, there's going to be some serious entertainment. It's going to be interesting as well, isn't it? It's, a, it's going to be difficult for the captains, I think, to make some of these decisions because if you take a player like Joffre Archer or Chris Jordan, who, who will imagine will open the bowling. Well, they're going to want those bowlers in the in the def overs as well, aren't they? So you've only got twenty balls. You've only got a, you know a maximum of four or five ball overs to use these guys in. It's going to be difficult to get the balance right of starting well, but making sure you've got your best def bowlers at the same time. And that's the thing. You could quite easily use up your def bowler in the middle overs when things aren't going to plan or the two batsmen set. So then there's going to be a lot of rejigging and juggling. There's going to be lots of conversations, I think, before this tournament starts, um, during the tournament. So, yeah, it's going to be very tricky. It's all new. And, yeah, who's going to bowl? Who's going to bowl in the middle of us? Where are you going to use those amazing death bowlers? And especially up front, you know, if, if a Joffre Archer has a bad day, which can quite easily happen in these sort of formats, what, what are they going to do? What's plan B? What's plan C? So for me... I am just relishing. I cannot wait to see how it all plays out and that pans out and, and what kind of entertainment, which, look, it's going to be brilliantly entertaining. It's going to be amazing, but it's going to be a tough one first few matches for, 
for captains and coaches alike. And it's difficult to know, I guess, what a, a good defendable score is because there's going to be no time for players to get themselves in. They have to get out and score straight away, don't they? Yeah, and that that's where you know they've got there's plenty in each team. They've got that variety in their attack. You've got the quicker bowlers, you've got the death bowlers, and then you, in the middle overs, or you've got the classy spinners that can genuinely is in the middle period. But yeah, it's going to be tough for batsmen. There's going to be no time to to get yourself in, have a look at a few deliveries. I think you've almost got to play yourself in on the way out if you're walking out to face your first delivery. So it's going to be, yeah, I think it's going to be great viewing. And I know the final sold out. And look, it's on terrestrial TV. It's on Sky Sports. Tune in. It's going to be immense. Let's uh, take a quick through run through the teams. We'll start off with the Birmingham Phoenix. Seven to one outsiders, but you don't have to look that far down their squad to see players who could win a game on their own, especially in these formats. Moen Ali and, and Liam Livingston being the two that jump out. Yeah, and, and I've, I've picked Liam Livingston as one of my star players for this tournament. He's off the back of a you know a brilliant T20 hundred. He's a great all rounder, brilliant fielder, and bowls as well, um, which is hugely important. But he is a phenomenal cricketer. I, I actually. I think when I commented on the 100 a couple of years back when, you know, when they had the draft, I said Birmingham Phoenix, they're probably not the stars of other teams that you would generally go, that team is full of star England stars and obviously stars, but you've got some very, very fantastic competitive players in that, you know, like you say, Chris Wokes, Moeen Ali, Liam Livingston, Adam Mill, Imran Tahir, brilliant leg spinner who's played all around the world, Pat Brown, who... You know, has been in the England setup, a young man from Worcester who has all the skills, brilliant death bowler. So for me, they actually look like the all round package. A team that you would arguably not, no disrespect to, you would say they haven't got the stars that the other teams have, maybe. But actually, that is a very good team. And to win competitions, it isn't all about having the best players. You know, if you play well as a team and you're consistent, you know, you, you, you can win any, any competition. And, I look at that team and think, yeah, it's a very good all-round team. Well, we'll move on, Ryan, to another 7-1 to one outside shot. But again, you could look at this and say that the price might be a little bit, uh, well, a little bit long in their favour because, again, players that can win the game on their own, Owen Morgan being one, there's plenty of international experience in there as well. Plenty of players who have been there and done it. So we're looking at them and saying they're outsiders, but that might be a little bit disrespectful. I think to... You know, it's um, it's one of those who who is going to win. You know, you look at through the teams they've got an array of superstars, and um, but yeah, Owen Morgan obviously his captaincy is phenomenal as a player. What he's achieved with England and and around the world. You know, I've gone for another Afghanistani, Mohammed Nabi, who is three dimensional. He absolutely hits the ball a country mile. He can bowl off spin. Brilliant fielder. Um, and then you look through that team, you know, they've got, again, all bases covered. Mason Crane, leg spinner, um, you know, roll-off van der Merwe, brilliant left armour, talented lower order batsman who can strike the ball. Um, so for me, you look and, it, again, it's all bases covered. It's an array of talented players once again, like many of the teams. And we talk about the versatility of the, the modern-day cricketer. For players like, I guess, Zach Crawley and Joe Denley, who play obviously very different styles of cricket in the longer forms of the game. They've got to adapt here and, you know, let their hands go a little bit and score quickly. Yeah, and, and that's the thing. The, these players generally play all formats so well. And these two are, are one of those two that stand out figures. You know, you look at Zach, you know, he's an England international in, in all formats now. You know, he's just recently played in these ODIs and he can hit the ball. You know, he can change his game. Um, to the shorter format. So, yeah, two very good players, very comfortable in shorter formats and, and two players that, are, you know, will be looking to catch the eye of, of fans and, and many of Sky Pundits and, and the BBC. And then moving on to the Northern Superchargers playing out of Headingley in Leeds, of course, a place you know very well and a man who has written his name to history at that stadium, Ben Stokes, he's going to be the man that everyone is looking to see. He sells tickets on his own, doesn't he? Yeah, I mean, he, you know, he's a standout cricketer, um, world-renowned. You know, he he himself puts bums on seats. He's one of those 
you know, players that just, you know, performs on the biggest stage. He does it when it matters. Uh, and it's great that the Northern fans, you know, Headley will be home from home with him, you know, with what he did against the Australians in the Ashes. He'll be very comfortable in those surroundings. And, you know, when, when the Headley fans get behind you, the Yorkshire fans and, and, you know, the Durham fans, they really do make a lot of noise. And I think I've also said that, that there could be a difference between the Northern Superchargers going on and, you know, going, getting all the way to the final because of the fans, they give you that extra 5%, 10%. You know, it's going to be amazing and it's going to be so intriguing. But yeah, he, he sells tickets alone, Ben Stokes. And he's alongside as well, so some good international overseas talent. Faf Duplessis, of course, the South African in there, and you've got Chris Lynn, the Australian as well. So there's, there's players coming in who are going to add a different dimension and a, a different level of experience to it. Yeah, and, you, and you've got, you know, a number of Yorkshire players. I mean, Chris Lynn, massive hitter of the ball, you know, again, in, in the big bash. You've got homegrown talent, you know, Adil Rashid, David Willey, Tom Cole, Cadmore, Adam Lyth, who are all been consistent in this format. Bryden Cars is another interesting one for me. You know, made his international debut in the ODI's bold and, and he can bat as well, batter beautifully. And, you know, Callum Parkinson. I mean, again, it's just a team full of, you know, absolute talent. And another one, being biased, being a left armour, but Mujib as well, Uraman, you know, he's an outstanding cricketer again. You know, it just seems like Afghanistan cricketers, they just pluck them out from thin air. They're just full of talent. Uh, and I mean, he's another one to look out for. Fantastic to see Afghanistan players, you know, making the progress they are ahead of, you know, some big white ball tournaments coming up and events, and that their stature in the in the 50, in the fifty and the twenty over games just seems to be going up and up, isn't it? Yeah, and I think for for world cricket, uh, for cricket to grow, you want more and more international teams competing at the highest level, and you know, Afghanistan have been around now for a number of years, and I think you see, like the hundred, you hope it grows globally and in this country, and it and children will look at their heroes and idols, and then they want to go take up the sport. Then they might end up playing the hundred. And you look at Afghanistan. You know, once they've been on the international stage, all of a sudden, young youngsters at you know whatever age, girls and boys, want to play for Afghanistan, and it's just amazing. Their conveyor belt now is growing and growing every year, and and for that reason. So, again, this concept is brilliant and hopefully, you know, our younger generation will really enjoy this, you know, the entertainment side, seeing all these superstars performing at the highest level and they'll get the bug and they'll want to play this format or want to play cricket, which is, at the end of the day, what it's all about. Absolutely. Well, moving on to the Oval Invincibles, the second London team in the competition and they're in at 11 to 2, so they've definitely, you know, been priced in with a shot. And you don't, again, you don't have to look too far down that team list to work out why. The Curran brothers, fantastic white ball players, Sam Billings, Rory Burns, you know, there's in England internationals throughout. Jason Roy, another one. They've got a real chance of going deep into this competition, haven't they? Yeah, I, they were one of the teams that you look at, you look down the lineup, and you generally say, like you, I don't know, like your Chelsea's or your in Manchester City and you go, wow, that is a seriously good team. They're so strong. And you go from 1 to 11, you go, wow, what a player, brilliant player, talented player, absolutely amazing. And, you know, again, that is a very, very good team. You know, I wouldn't ride those off to, to make the final. You know, with the current brothers, um, Sunil Narine, again, you know, phenomenal cricketer. Um, they've just got all bases covered and, and so they look so strong in every department. Saqib Mahmood, um, I mean, he's off the back of, he must be absolutely um, on top of cloud nine at the moment with where he's performed and he's bowling and he bowls 90 miles an hour, brilliant Yorker bowler at the death, which is, I think, is going to be crucial in this tournament. You know, yes, they've all got the batsmen, they've all got the, you know, the overseas players and the all-rounders, but whoever bowls the best at the death, the last sort of five or six overs, will see, identify who will probably go to the final or go all the way because so important those last four overs you know to come off having the momentum as a bowling side well we've spoken about how important fast bowling is going to be ryan let's take a look at the tournament favorites the southern braves in at nine to two and look at this for an attack jopper archer chris jordan time l mills they've got some fantastic all-rounders in there 
as well. That's a pretty scary prospect for any batting side, isn't it? Wow, well, yeah. I mean, tastes like fire, isn't it? The, the one thing I was concerned with Southern Brave, you look at that bowling attack and, and yes, it's such a genuine w- wicket-taking team. But also, because you have those 90-mile-an-hour bowlers, modern-day cricketers, you, you just tap it and it's going to fly over the boundary. So it'd be interesting to see that team, how you know where they will use all these amazing seamers and the pace that they have at their you know disposal. You know, you've got George Garton who you know has been in around the setup now. Left armer again, 90 mile an hour bowler. So I mean, they have all the pace. They have the bowlers to win this competition. It just for me that team are going to have to go on and score heavily and good runs to give the bowlers an opportunity. Um, but if they bowl badly, you know they can be fetching it because 90 miles an hour certainly travels. And it's interesting, you know, just looking at who, where the talent is in that team, it does look like it's a, it, their approach is, to, is with the bowlers, if you know what I mean. They've got some fantastic batting talent in there as well, but there is pressure on the likes of Devin Conway and Colin de Grandom and Quinton de Kock to get in and score a lot of runs, as you said. Yeah, the, I think that is going to be on us on, on the top order. The top four are going to have to score big runs, I feel, um, for them to go on uh, and, and win this competition. But then don't write them off. You know, like I said, bowling will generally will win you to global tournaments. And that is a seriously good bowling attack with all bases covered. But for me, I think I picked Devin Conway out. He, you know, brilliant test cricketer. He's performed amazing over here. He's in great form with Somerset at the moment, scoring runs, um, very consistent. So, you know, he's a very, very good cricketer. But yeah, you look at that team, you think, wow, what a bowling attack. We're well, moving to Trent Bridge and the Trent Rockets in at 11 to 2. And they're an interesting one because they've got plenty of, of talent in there Alex Hales, Joe Root, David Milan, of course. But you do wonder if some of these players are, are, are suited to such a short format. Yeah, I mean, I, I've picked again another Afghanistan, not being biased, but, you know, Rashid Khan, who is probably one of the number one bowlers in the world, genuine wicket taker in those middle overs. I don't know where they'll use him. That would be very intriguing to see how they use him, whether in the power plays or in the middle overs where teams are looking to attack and score heavily. Yeah, it's one of, it's kind of a homegrown team a little bit, isn't it? You've got your Tom Moore, Stephen Mullaney, uh, Ben Cox from Worcestershire, Alex Hales, you know, Matt Carter. So a lot of homegrown talented players in that team. And Alex Hales, again, he's got still got a lot to prove, you know, He's been one of those players that everyone's talking about. Why is he not in England set up? So he'll be looking to um, go one better and, and score even more bigger runs as he does. But yeah, he looks a pretty competitive team. For me, the only thing that I've picked out is you've got March and Delangy, who's in early. And then there's no Wahab Riaz comes in. But for me, left arm is a hugely important in this competition. And Wahab Riaz not being there for the first few games. I think that might unsettle a few teams because he he can compete and you know he takes early wickets. So having him, I think he's quite a big miss. I mean, you said there about left arm as being so important. I, I guess this is another dimension to captaincy as well because if you're playing these ten ball overs, we can only imagine that the strike is going to change, uh, you know, fairly regularly uh, as teams go on the attack. If you've got a, a left arm and a right arm batsman at each end. That is going to change the dynamic, isn't it, uh, for such a long period of time as 10 balls? Yeah, and, and, and also, you know, if you've got two left arm, left hand batsmen in, you know, you want a left armer, you know, with Sear and Yorkers bowling at leg stump, it gives them no room uh, to free their arms. So it's going to be, again, tactically, I'm, I'm excited and interested how the tactics will work, what bowlers they will use specifically for the batsmen. You know, who are they, which bowler is the opposition batsman, batting team going to target? You know, who are they going to go after? Of course, yes, you're going to have to just go for ball, from ball one. But for me, it's picking your bowler as well. You know, and those 10 ball overs, five ball overs, going to be crucial. Who the captain uses, um, you know, to nullify, you know, the, the batting sides. And it is really interesting. It really is. And Wahab Rias, I feel, is a big miss because that left arm variety is quite crucial in, in this format now. Let's have a look at Welsh Fire, a team I think have gone a little bit under the radar in the build-up to this, but Johnny Bairstow, Jimmy Neesham is in there, Ollie Pope as well. There's runs in that top order to be had, aren't there? 
yeah, big big runs in that top order. You know, you've got you've got Tom Banton who hits the ball a country mile. Yeah, it's one of those teams, isn't it? Like you know, they're all brilliant players in their own right. But you you look at other teams, you're like, wow, that's a great team. Like we talked about the Southern Brave with that bowling attack, and that team, you know, full of consistent performers. And and again, you know, don't underestimate that team. You know, Cass Ahmed, you know, young leg, young leg spinner, very you know has all. Every, all every variations at his disposal. Jimmy Neesham, the New Zealander. Um, so that, you know, it's a co- very competitive team. The guys that have been around uh, for a number of years, being consistent, you know, at, at their clubs and performing very well, you know, at T20 cricket. So don't write that team off. That top order is, is ridiculously strong. Well, the last team then to talk about is based in Old Trafford, of course. It's the Manchester originals and uh, this is an interesting one they're in at six to one which suggests they're kind of in the middle of the pack somewhere but it, it, i feel like i've said this ahead of every team but they've re- they've got a real shot haven't they i guess that's the beauty of the draft system is that the talent is just so balanced throughout the competition yeah and and that you know again looking through that that probably has the most balance in in the tip you know you've got those fast bowlers ollie robinson you know left arm fred classen but when you've got phil salt joss butler um, at the top of the order, and then they've got some seriously good pace as well. Lockie Ferguson, Jamie Overton, you know, two guys that can bowl 90 miles an hour, you know, fast, bouncy. It's a big outfield at Old Trafford. So, yeah, they they look a very competitive team. They really do. And when you've got Colin Munro and Carlos Braithwaite, um, you know, two players who can hit it 40 rows back, um, that looks a pretty, pretty good team, actually. Well, now that we've had a look then at all of the teams, Ryan, based on what we've got across these eight sides, if you had to make a prediction as to how these next few weeks might pan out and who might be lifting the first trophy <laughs> in the 100 ever, who do you think you might be pumping for? Yeah, I mean, first and foremost, I'm going to say I can't wait for the first few games, you know, tactically, how a team's going to use, you know, their superstar bowlers, where they're going to bowl them, who's going to bowl the death. So for me, it's, it's really, really interesting you know, with the razzmatazz and the kits and the sponsors, it's going to be absolutely awesome. Um, but if I had to pick a team, you know, I'm actually going to go Manchester Originals. Um, I thought Welsh Fire look a competitive team, but just Manchester have, you know, those players that have they've all been there and done it. You know, they've got that pace bowling and they've got Butler and Phil Salt, you know, at the top of the order um, who, you know, fireworks and then those big, strong overseas players. So, Manchester Originals, I'm going to go for. Um, behind those, I'm going to actually go for Oval Invincibles. Um, just because of their players, you've got the Currens, um, Sunil Narine with his mystery spin, and you know Jason Roy, who you know has been in around the setup. So those are the two teams that I'm looking at. I feel are going to make the final. I mean, it's anyone's guess at the moment, but I'm just so excited by this competition. We're going to wait and see, and hopefully. You know, girls and boys of all ages will be absolutely jumping at the bit to watch the first few games and see how they all pan out. Yeah, it should be fantastic. Let's just quickly rattle through those first, those opening round of fixtures. It starts with the Oval Invincibles against the Manchester Originals, two teams that you've just tipped up as well at the Oval. Yeah. Uh, this will be, a, 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 I guess, a real fire, a fire brand of a start for both teams. And, I think we're going to learn a lot just in this first game, aren't we, about how coaches... And yeah, players two, two fantastic teams. The reason why I pick those teams, um, I think those teams stand out for me and they're playing each other first. So it's going to be very intriguing, you know, what kind of tactics. And also other teams will be watching to see how these two teams go at it, how they play it. Are they going to go hard from ball one? What type of bowlers, where are they going to use them? So, you know... And it's anyone's guess, but those two teams stand out for me and they're playing first. So everyone's going to get a good view and you're going to see some absolutely amazing talent on show. And then Friday, the Birmingham Phoenix against London Spirit at Edgebaston. Difficult place to go and play cricket, of course. Where do you see this one ending up? Yeah, I, I would say, I think Birmingham Phoenix, home from home. Again, they've got a number of players. Again, not stand out, but, you know, some really good players. So I'm going to go Birmingham Phoenix for me. I think they'll just have, have enough home soil advantage as well. Um, and they'll be all accustomed to be playing at Edgebaston. So they know the ground inside out and the conditions uh, and the wicket as well. And then the Trent Rockets versus the Southern Brave at Trent Bridge. And 
Uh, we went and mentioned it earlier on, but we are going to learn a lot here, aren't we, about Southern Brave and, and whether going so top heavy in this bowling attack is a good idea. That That's probably going to be one of the standout games in terms of watching that bowling attack. Um, I can't wait to watch, see how, you know, fast pace, bouncy, but, um, you know, at, at Trent Bridge, I, I'm going to go, there's, you've got the short boundary, the new stand, which has sort of cut the ground um, in half. So there's going to be a very short boundary one side. And like I said, with that pace, if they get it wrong, they're going to go the distance. So that's going to be a really intriguing match. And then it, uh, the first round of games rounded off by the Northern Superchargers and the Welsh Fire at Emerald Headingley. And a, an opportunity for both of these sides to lay a marker down when perhaps they're not too fancy. Yeah, two teams that you, you would, uh, you know, again, uh, you know, again, you know, the, the odds uh, would say in, in terms of those two teams, nobody really fancies them. But, you know, home soil advantage for me, Northern Superchargers, Ben Stokes, um, Headingley Rocking. But then you, you look and you've got your Johnny Bairstow, though, who will, you know, he's a big time player and you want to go back on home soil and, and sort of score runs <laughs> against the fans, Headingley fans and the York fans. For me, I think home soil advantage, York look too strong for the Welsh. Oh, we've uh, focused on the men's game, of course, in this, but just a quick note, obviously most of these games are being played as double headers alongside the women's competition and that's fantastic to see, isn't it? Yeah, I... It's an absolute delight, and I think, you know, to everyone involved in the 100 and the sponsors to, to mirror those games, to have the women game alongside them, um, and they're going to be on, you know, on the biggest stage, Sky Sports, like I said, and BBC. Every game's going to be on television, and hopefully, you know, girls will be inspired by watching, you know, their new heroes, new idols. And, and again, there's some fantastic teams um, in, in and amongst those. So strong. I mean, you know, for me, I've, I've gone for, who did I pick out? I actually picked out um, Welsh Fire um, to go all the way. Um, there's a couple of close friends of mine, uh, Georgia Hennessy, um, who has the curls like myself, a very good cricketer. Stuff is um, a brilliant player and they've got Sarah Taylor, best keeper in the world. So for me, I picked Welsh Fire to go on and win that competition for the women's. Um, but yeah, like you said, it's absolutely brilliant. My daughter plays cricket. Um, the game, women's game, is growing immensely. Um, lots and lots of girls are taking up the sport. And, and it gives opportunity for, for the women, um, you know, to be on the big stage in front of big crowds, to experience it for the first time. And you know what? Put on a show. You know, I think some of the girls have already said this is so new and so amazing that we are going to be on a big stage in front of big crowds performing at highest level um, and hopefully they can do it justice and I'm really excited by the women's but for me I picked Welsh Fire to win that competition for the women's. And just quickly Ryan before I let you go because we are running out of time before the 100 kicks off there's quite a big T20 tomorrow night as well at Old Trafford the decider in the series between England and Pakistan and it, based on the first two games this one could go either way. It, but yeah, I'm there tomorrow. I'm I'm working. I'm hosting. Um, I'm going around the boxes, so I cannot wait. It's been two great games, hasn't it? Um, you know, I've seen some some great cricket. You know, some great uh, death bowling, especially by Pakistan. But England again, they're just so strong, aren't they? They keep unearthing these talented players, and Liam Livingston now, who's been on the fringes, comes in and he's smashing the ball everywhere. And it's anyone's guess who's going to win this uh, win this third T uh, Twenty. Game, I, I really can't call it between the two. There's not much between them, so it's going to be really exciting. You've got to tune in because I mean, there's going to be fireworks. Well, what a summer of cricket we're having, and it's going to keep getting better. Ryan, thank you for joining us. We've said it all throughout, pleasure. but I'm so excited for the hundred. It's going to be a fantastic competition, and uh, I'm sure we'll check in with you again as the competition goes on. Yep, see you all very soon. Um, I'm really enjoying commenting on the 100 and we'll see you in a bit. And it's, but look, it's going to be great. It really is. Please watch it. Please tune in and please pick your team, whichever colour you like or whichever player you fancy or whichever player is your favourite. Please support the 100. It's going to be cracking.